Hey guys, it's Shakia from Stillaholics Anonymous. It has been a while since I have done a video for YouTube. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things and especially since version 4 is out now, I'm trying to work on recreating some of the videos that I did for version 3 with version 4. So the first video that I'm going to do is going to be on the knockout design and I'm going to use it. I'm going to do it utilizing version 4. Now, everything that I am doing in this video can definitely be done in version 3 as well. I will also go ahead and post a link to the version 3 uh, knockout video that I have. And even in that one, if maybe there's something I covered in that one that I don't cover in this one, everything applies to each version. You just may have to look around the screen and figure out exactly where that icon or where that tool is located. We are going to make these two designs. I'm going to show you how to do it both ways to where if it's just uh, two colors or if you want to mix it up and add different colors, how you would do that. I am going to do an additional video um, later on with an outline on it so that it can all be one color. But I didn't want to put too much into this video. So we're going to just focus on these two styles and then I'll do another video for um, a way where you can do an offset and make the whole design one color, but you still see the image in the middle, okay? So this was just a unicorn file that I, um, that I pulled from the internet and then I did some modifications to it as well. So what you want to do is just type out your text, okay? So I already did this, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it again just that you can see how I did the different levels. Because of the fact that one word is longer than the other, you want to stretch it out. So I'm just going to type in caps. I'm going to come over here to my text tool and choose impact. Make that a little bit bigger. And then to duplicate so that I don't have to go back to the text box and change the text, since it's already in the text form that I want, I'm just going to make a duplicate. Now, the easiest way to do that would be so that it's right under it would be to hold down your control key or command if you're using a Mac and hit your down arrow. It's going to give you a duplicate. Another way to make duplicates is to hold down alt, click on the image and drag it down. Another way that you can make a duplicate is right here from this icon right here, which is your replicate panel. And you can choose to replicate to um, either right or left or up or down. You can also mirror same thing. So I would encourage you guys to look at your icons, get used to where they are, play around with them so that you know how they function. So with this one, it's right under it. I'm gonna go ahead and tab that up some. And I'm gonna double click on there to select the text edit mode. So you have to double click in order to edit your text. I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut of Control or Control A or Command A on a Mac to select all. You can also, if you're not comfortable with keyboard shortcuts, when you double click on it, just start at the end, drag it all the way over, or double click, right click, and choose, I believe it's on this one. Maybe it's not on here for select all. I know there um, in other programs they have the select all, but they don't have it in here. So it's a matter of either drag and select or control A for select all. I'm going to go ahead and change that to love. And then I'm just going to pull here at, if you pull from any of the side uh, do, 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 boxes or, oh, God, what, what, I can't, can't think of what to think of. Can't think of the word I want to say, but if you pull from any of these, it will adjust proportionally. If you ever move from any of the side adjusters, it's going to either stretch it this way or stretch it down. It won't move proportionally. So I'm going to undo that and I'm going to go ahead and drag it like this. Okay. So I got that to where it's pretty lined up. You can either choose to continue to make it bigger or you can go in this case, you can go a little bit wider. It is best for you to see the design that your letters are kind of close together. And actually, I think that's what I'm going to do with this one more. So rather than take separate the letters, I'm going to move them in closer and then increase it. But for other things, if you want, you can do your character spacing 
and I could add a little bit of spacing um, to this so that it goes right to the edge. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take away some spacing. And I've come to find out with version four, the sliders are they're, they aren't as accurate or you can't slide um, as easy as you could in version three. Like it kind of jumps to bigger numbers. So I find myself having to have to find a good range to where I want to be and then manually change the value. So for this one, it's 90. I'm going to go up to 95. The E and the V are kind of touching. So let's go up to 97. Actually, no, I think I liked it at 95. Let's try 96. There we go. So that the E and the V weren't quite touching. Then I'm just going to tap. Oops. Wait, too far. Too far. Let's go back to 96. Make sure that you do click off of that so that that does not happen. You change the value. I'm going to actually shift this up or hold down shift and tab up some because I want it to be the exact same size. So I'm going to go just like this and then hold down shift and tab it down. Want it to be right up under it. All right, got that all out of the way. One of the things that I love to do is fill things with color. It makes it easier to select things. It allows you to see what's selected. So most of the time when I'm working, I always fill things with color. Right now, I'm just picking very random colors. This is already colored in, and it's best for this design if you are using a solid design. You're gonna have ones that are gonna have an outline, and I will do a video on that as far as troubleshooting a knockout design and knowing which types of images work and which ones don't. But for the most part, you wanna try and keep it to where it's really solid and you don't want something that it's more so an outline and it has like a transparent middle and like a lot of little pieces. Those don't come out or you don't get the full visual of the design when you're doing it that way. So I'm gonna take this and pull it down, right click and bring it to the front. Now, where you position this at is all on you. Um, just know that depending on how you position it, you know, will determine how much of the image you lose. I'm going to make Unicorn Love just a little bit bigger. Um, so with this one, I'm just going to off put it, put it here because I do want to make sure that I do have some of the nose and like it's not in the O to where I'm going to lose that part and the nose is going to get cut off right here. So I am going to adjust it some to where, you know, I will still have the nose area so that I can actually tell, you know, you know what it is. So I'm going to move this over just a tad. Actually, I'm actually going to move it over just a little bit more. Um, I want to make sure that I do have the ear. I have the nose. I do have a piece of like the swirl here. So where exactly you put it at, that is all in personal preference. There is no right or wrong. I mean, there are some tips. Like I said, you know, you want to make sure that you don't have areas that you truly want to keep in any open areas, whether it be in between a letter um, such as O or in between like two letters like L and O. Like you don't want anything in the open areas because those, of course, will not show up. All right. Now to the nitty gritty on how you do this. I do it a very simple way. Um, don't have to move things around and make a lot of duplicates. We're going to drag and select over everything. Oh, I'm sorry. One other thing that you want to do because we're using subtract, you want to group your two words together. So if you do two words together, you definitely want to group them together because of how subtract works. If they're not grouped together, it's going to basically take away one of the lines of text. So make sure before you do anything, before you, um, subtract or crop or anything like that or copy you take your lines of text if there are two right click and group or you can use the keyboard shortcut control g command g on a mac now i'm going to select them all i'm going to go control c to copy you can also right click and choose copy you're not going to do anything with that copy just yet we're going to go over to our modify and get rid of this one and we're going to go over to our modify window and we are going to subtract. Okay. So now it has the letters and the image is now moved out. Okay. I'm going to group those together. 
I'm going to, so I did control G. I'm now going to paste in front the design again. So I'm going to go control F or you can right click and choose paste in front, not just paste. And let me undo. So control F, paste in front. Make sure that you don't click off or do anything like that because what you need is currently selected. So as soon as you paste in front, you want to go back over to modify and you want to crop. And I'm going to control G. I'm going to group that together. Now we're basically done with this one. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the line color. And if you are setting this up with heat transfer vinyl, you can pretty much just eyeball it as far as position. I will say though that with this, because the, um, the sections touch, when you're using heat transfer vinyl, you're more likely to have shrinkage and it's not going to fit perfectly when it's done this way. I like doing this particular way more so for um, adhesive designs using adhesive vinyl because you, with the alignment marks, you can position it a little bit better. So I like using this method. When I do the other video, that's going to be more ideal for to me for heat transfer vinyl because you're going to give yourself a little bit of a gap to where it does not have to be right on. Uh, you know, it won't have to be perfect. And if you have any shrinkage, you're not going to really be able to tell. Okay. But for the most part, this is done. I can move this out of the way. It's ready to go. So I'm going to undo, move this off to the side, and I'm going to show you a way where you can change the colors. Control F. Now, the way that I'm going to do it now can very well be done even just for two colors. And I also want to do it this way to show you that it does not matter if you do subtract first or you do crop, you're going to get the same results. But by reversing it, it does allow me to edit things out and change colors a little bit easier. So I'm going to have this here. I'm going to go ahead and copy. This time I'm going to right click and copy. The first thing I'm going to do this time, rather than subtract, I'm going to crop. So it's going to give me the unicorn. Now I can work with this a little bit easier to change the colors. So I'm going to select everything right here for the horn and I'm going to group it together. I'm going to select everything else, hold down my shift key, select the horn, and then I'm going to, actually some of these are really small areas, so I'm going to delete some of those first because I really don't need those. So I'm going to drag and select over everything, hold down shift, select the horn that I previously grouped together, and then control G, group those together. Now I'm going to paste in front again. So control F, or you can right click and choose paste in front. Then we're going, this time we're going to subtract. Now, because I have this area grouped together, it's easier for me to select everything at the bottom where love is, hold down my shift key, select the unicorn. Now I have just those pieces of the word love, I can go ahead and change that to a different color. Uh, let's go with a green. I don't really like that one. It doesn't really matter in this case, but you know, when you're designing sometimes, you know, I'm kind of a perfectionist. I like for it to still look good. Same thing with the top. We're going to drag and select over all the parts of the word unicorn, hold down shift, click on the unicorn. So now I have just the word unicorn selected. And I'm going to go over here and we're going to change that to, oops, I forgot about the horn. So I'm going to hold down shift. Well, it's fine. I'll leave that that way. So now I'm going to click on the horn. I'm going to make that one gold or goldish type color. And let's make the unicorn itself a pretty pale um, purple. Select them all. Remove the line color. And I guess I never grouped together the love. So hold on, let's take that, hold down shift, select the unicorn, control G to group it. And I guess the top didn't do it either unless I just undo, uh, I did undo. So select the top, hold down shift, select the horn, select the unicorn itself. And what piece is right here? Oh no, that's just these two pieces overlapping because I see 
this little box here, but that's just the top and the bottom overlapping. So control G, group it together. So now I have this piece, this piece, this and this and this right here. Um, let's see, not that significant. So I'm going to actually delete those. Okay. Now this one would be a little bit more difficult to align. Um, not say difficult, but it's just a few more steps. If you're using adhesive vinyl, you're still going to use your alignment marks. I will do a separate video um, using this exact same file. I just don't want to put too much in this one. I find that some people say they become too long and it becomes a bit confusing um, if too much information is all in one video. So you definitely can do this with adhesive vinyl and make it four colors. You just have to be very, very careful when you are lining them up, lining up your alignment marks or as some people call them registration marks. And when it comes to heat transfer vinyl, you would actually be pressing this uh, a total of four times. So each time you're doing it, you're going to get a little bit of shrinkage. So this may not be ideal for that. But if you're using this maybe for tags, um, for parties or um, labels, if you are someone that makes stickers, you can easily take this. Let's group it all together. Go over to our offset, put an offset on it. You can make it round, you can make it corner, um, you can change the size of it. So with this one, let's make the offset a little bit smaller. So let's go 0.1. And then we're gonna hit apply. And I'm going to go control shift E, which is to release compound path. Or you can right click and choose, well, it's not here now, but release compound path. And then we're gonna weld all this together. So now you have this to where you can cut the outside part and the middle part will just print so you can make a nice sticker with it. So this will give you options um, other than just with vinyl. You can use it in print um, for printed things. But if you want to use it for vinyl, um, you definitely can. This probably will be awesome as a printed transfer design rather than use heat transfer vinyl. So you do have quite a few options that you can use when you're doing a knockout design like this. OK, so. Hope you guys found that helpful. If you have any additional questions, do not hesitate to ask. You can post it as a comment in this video, or if you're watching this from a Facebook post, feel free to go ahead and post a comment. Um, if you want to email me any questions or video requests, my email is in the description box. Also in the description box is the link to my Facebook group, Silaholics Anonymous. All right, guys, until next time, have a great one.